All right, welcome everybody to the Living Hope Agency call. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing started. I had a plan for what we were gonna talk about on this call tonight. We're gonna talk about getting the newest agent launched. And um, I had a couple conversations with some different agents here over the day about things that they were struggling with. And it just brought me back to a call that we've done in the past. And it brought me back to a topic that I talk about more than any other topic. And that topic is the number one epidemic in the FFL business. Um, and it's why most new agents fail. And this is the number one skill set, the number one discipline, the agents who are not finding success that they lack. Uh, this is the most important thing that you can develop if you want to make it long term in this business. And that skill is dialing the phone. And some of y'all are just like, I'm just going to tune out of this call right now. I saw that coming and you're probably rolling your eyes. You know, I joined this call to learn how to launch a new agent. I joined this call to learn what are the secrets to success. I'm sick of hearing about the disciplines of dialing the phone. I want to know the secret information. I want to know the information only the top people know. And I want the shortcut to helping 30 families a month. I want to know how do I buy 15 leads, book 15 appointments and be off the phone in two hours. I want to have zero no shows and I want to sell all 15 appointments that I sit with. Um, well, guys, if that's the training that you're looking for, um, you can go ahead and log off right now. Because the simple, the mundane, the basics, those are the things that are going to make you guys the most money in Family First Life. And there's really only three basics in Family First Life. Number one is obviously buying the leads. Number two is dialing the phone. And number three is going to sit with the people. And all the time I have agents, they tell me, um, I want to figure out what are the best leads to dial. You know, I want the ones where everybody says yes, they say, come on over, the ones that answer every single time on the first dial, the ones who are always interested, that have no objections, the ones who have, you know, a few hundred dollars a month to spend. I want those ones to fill up my schedule. I want those leads too, but I'm not getting them, okay? And what kind of leads are those? They don't exist. They do not exist. So I want to make sure we start this call by saying a lead is a lead is a lead is a lead. And some of y'all will agree with me and some of y'all will not agree with me at all because you haven't figured out the key and the secret to success here, which is dialing the phone. So because you haven't figured out dialing the phone, you say a lead's not a lead, you know, not all leads are created equal. Yes, they are. Um, we're going to dig into some different lead types here and why it makes absolutely no difference what lead type. And the other thing that agents say to me is, I feel like if I just improved my closing ratio, if I improved my closing ratio and I learned all the right things to say in the home, I'd have a better return on my investment and I'd be more successful. Um, I would argue to say that anybody, if they work hard enough, they can learn how to close two out of three, two or three out of 10 appointments, two or three out of 10 appointments that they sit with. But the issue that most people have is they're not sitting with enough people. They actually have a pretty good closing ratio. If they just doubled the number of appointments they sat on, their numbers would look a lot better. And people ask for advice on how they can improve their in-home, but that's not really what they need help with. Um, we improve our closing ratio by simply just sitting with more people in a shorter period of time. And we condense that learning curve and leapfrog other people when we run a lot of appointments in that short period of time. Okay. And if you and me are in a competition to sell the most premium, to help the most families, one of you guys might say, there's zero chance I'm going to beat Jamie. He's a Hall of Fame producer. He helped almost 500 families last year. He regularly helps 10 to 15 families every single week. You know, you actually can beat me. Even if my closing ratio is higher, even if I close eight out of 10, you can beat me. You can beat me by outworking me. So you can make up in numbers what you lack in skill. So if I only work eight appointments or 10 appointments and I sell eight, you could work 20 to 30 appointments and you could sell 10 or 15, okay? So if we just jump and we get more appointments, it doesn't really matter how good the skill set is. You can outwork me if you wanna get better. And here's the coolest thing is that you do this over a couple of weeks without wavering on your commitment to your appointment count. So you say, I'm gonna book 15 appointments on this dial day no matter what, even if it takes me dialing till 9 p.m. If you do that and you actually just commit to doing whatever it takes to getting in front of a family, your closing ratio will drastically improve and you'll increase your ROI. So I guess everything in this business, it comes down to the phones. And this is why we call it the number one epidemic in this business, because so many people say, I hate dial day. Drop a two in the comments. If you're guilty of ever saying, I hate dial day, and I'll be one of the first people to say it. I've totally been guilty of saying, I hate dial day. Lots of twos, lots of people who say they've hated dial day. And guys, other people say, I love this business, but I hate dialing the phone. I wish that I could just have a bunch of appointments booked for me because I love the in-home part. Well, Jamie, I just can't focus and sit down in my chair long enough. 
guys, I've heard absolutely everything. And I've said absolutely everything. You have to learn how to love dial day. Candy said it best. You have to love dial day. So guys, as agents, here's the thing that we do. We try to find ways to avoid the work. We try to find shortcuts. And I'm telling you that the way to everything that you want in this business, it's through the work. And it's not just doing the work, but it's falling in love with the work. There's a YouTube video that some of y'all might've heard me reference in the past. It's from a guy named Alex Hormozzi. He is just an absolute savage online, one of the best online marketers that exists. He talks about how he scaled a business from one guy selling gym memberships to an $85 million in net revenue business in six years. And that's net revenue, it's profit. So he profited $85 million in a year, six years into his business. And he talked about how a lot of us want to work really, really hard so we can get to the point where we get passive income so that we don't have to actually do the work anymore. And I know that at least in my previous background, um, you know, network marketing or direct sales or even, you know, the marketing agency that I ran, I wanted to build passive income where I really didn't have to do much work. Um, I wanted to do the least amount of work to make the most amount of money. So I had a really hard time sitting down to dial. I had a really hard time doing the dirty work. I had a really hard time getting in the trenches to actually protect families. And in this video, Alex talks about how he built his business to a passive income very fast. And he found himself just kind of sitting around, you know, contemplating the meaning of life, which is what happens when most people have nothing to do because they don't need to work for their money. And he said he was just miserable. And I know some of y'all, that's the dream. How can I do the least amount of work to make the most amount of money? But he got to that point and he said he was absolutely miserable. And I've also been there to that point where, you know, I've had passive income. You know, it wasn't much, but it was enough to pay my bills and I wasn't happy. So he talked about instead of glorifying passive income, why don't we glorify active income? Okay. The kind of work that we have to do every day. And it's actually more fun. It's actually way more satisfying. And we actually grow a lot more as a person. He basically said, let's make active income cool again. And guys, there's no better place to make active income than selling insurance with Family First Life. So we'll dig in a little bit here. Um, guys, my background, I can't even tell you how many times that I wanted to build passive income so that I didn't have to work anymore. And even if I got to that point, I wasn't fulfilled. You know, anybody who was at the Los Angeles conference, you heard me talk about it, the lack of fulfillment I have, the honest depression I had in building those kinds of businesses. And then I came here and it's like, I got my confidence back. I got out in the world. I started serving families and it's been one of the most amazing uh, growth things that's happened for me, you know, going out there and doing active income activities on a daily basis and just feeling that fulfillment every day. So before we move on, I wanted to read a Facebook post that I made in our Facebook group quite a while back. This was probably back in like January. Okay. So I'm going to read this to you guys. It said, the only difference between somebody who's producing at a high level and someone who's not is that the person producing at a high level actually believes in themselves and the skills they've developed enough to buy leads every week. More leads equals more appointments. More appointments in a short period of time equals shortening the learning curve. Shortening the learning curve will gain confidence in what we do and you can learn how to make money at will. Take away everything that I have and give me $1,000 and I have the confidence to bet on myself to flip that into four to seven policies or families helped minimum. If you aren't confident enough to bet on yourself, you haven't run enough appointments yet. You just need to get over the hump of the learning curve. Then this business is actually so much fun. It's just math. How many leads do I need to buy to get 30 appointments to sit on 20 and sell 10? That's it. And if you could go from selling $1 Spending $1 and making two to three to spending $1 to make seven to 10, wouldn't you be willing to do literally anything to learn that skill set? If you buy 100 leads, spend a thousand bucks, you sell one to break even, our average commission about a thousand dollars. If you can't believe in yourself enough to sell one and reinvest it and try again next week until you figure it out, then commission based sales is not for you. Do the work, gain the confidence, then bet on yourself every week. 100 to 150 leads per dial day is the magic formula, 30 appointments a week, and you won't fail. I believe anybody can do this, but do you believe that you can do this? You're one decision away from getting through the hard part and climbing that first hill to never having to worry about how to make money again. When you have confidence in this skill set, the question is not how do I make money? The question is how much money do I want to make and how hard am I willing to work for it? It's powerful. It's powerful, guys. 
So I think anybody who's found success here, we already talked about this. We can all agree that all leads are good leads. And what it really comes down to is not the leads. What it comes down to is personal responsibility. Okay, personal responsibility. But Jamie, what do you mean by personal responsibility? Guys, you know, you people say to me, I can't control the people on the other side of the phone if they're in a bad mood or if they're, if they're mean to me. I can't control if they filled out the request looking for a quote and now they're mad because their phone's blowing up or if they actually wanted to buy life insurance today. But here's the deal. What we can control is we can control getting better. We can control getting better on the phones and we can control the story that we tell ourselves about the leads. The story that we tell ourselves about the leads is powerful. Guys, the person did fill out the form. They did fill out the form. When you start believing the BS story that you tell yourself that the leads aren't interested, that they didn't really fill it out, you're going down a very slippery slope and you're on your way right out of this business if you believe that story long enough. So personal responsibilities is it's not the leads, it's me, it's you. Guys, what is the common denominator in all of the phone calls that we make? It's you, it's us. Only we can get better. It's not the leads, it's you. So guys, we have to take personal responsibility for everything. And, you know, when the person says, I'm not interested, I already got taken care of, F off, whatever it is, it's not them still, it's us. Because I promise you, if you gave that same stack of leads to somebody else, I guarantee you somebody else would go through and book the ones that you didn't book. I guarantee you somebody else could help them. So you have to really take this time and you have to say my journey in FFL, it's going to be all about personal responsibility. I'm responsible for the action I take. I'm responsible for my emotional response to the results, whether it's good or bad. I'm responsible for getting better. And I'm not going to blame my clients for my lack of ability to connect with them and help them. I'll say that last part again. I'm not going to blame my clients for my lack of ability to connect with them and help them. So we have to have that mindset. And secondly, we have to have the mindset that it's not just a numbers game or that it is just a numbers game. Sorry. We have to have the mindset that it is just a numbers game. And I don't need everyone to say yes. But the more swings I have, the better chances I have at booking my appointments. If every single person who filled out the form bought insurance, guys, they wouldn't be called leads. They'd be called sales. And everyone would do this, but there's nowhere in the world that you can buy sales. We buy leads and we work leads. And it's still 100% better than convincing your friends and family or going out to try to cold prospect people and try to help them get interested in life insurance to convince them that they need it or somebody who already knows it's important and then maybe their phone's blowing up and our job is to reduce the sales pressure, which we're going to talk about here shortly. So now we've agreed that you have to have the prior, the proper mindset. Um, it's just about work. Uh, some people are truly willing to put in the work to get better. And some of y'all aren't. You're just not willing to work. That was me for a long time. I had to overcome some different personal challenges to get to that point where I was willing to work. But here's the deal. If I'm a coach and somebody's coming into this business, I would take the person, if you said, hey, we, we're going to go and whoever can sell the most premium over the course of you know, two years as a team is going to win. I would take the person on my team who's horrible on the phones, who's willing to dial the phone 700 or a thousand times to get better over the person who's actually great on the phones right away, but they get bored after 50 dials or they feel like they're above the work or they're too good for it. Um, at the end of the day, this business is skill versus will. I would take the person with willpower over the person with skill any day because we can coach that person and make them a champion. On the other hand, uh, you know, a prima donna that isn't willing to work, that has a bad attitude, nobody can coach that. So I want to talk about a script opener that I've been using to dial internet leads lately. That's been a game changer. And if any of you guys have followed my previous videos, a lot of you guys have heard me talk about how to book an appointment with a pissed off internet lead by calling out the fact that their phone is blowing up, okay? And I've done this for a very long time. It's worked really well. But one thing that I found myself 
is not able to get to the point with some of these leads where I can even get to that point of overcoming the objection because they're hanging up on me so fast before I can even get through my first couple sentences. And typically the way that it works, you know, when I did it the previous way, which is overcoming the objection of I'm not interested is, you know, I call them and they say they're not interested. And I say, are you not interested because you actually aren't interested? Or are you not interested because your phone's been getting blown up with telemarketers? Well, because my phone's been getting blown up with telemarketers. Perfect. I'm the manager calling to apologize that you've been getting your phone blown up. My job is to get those phone calls to stop, get that informational packet out there to you like you originally requested. I've got the date of birth here. Is 81593, is that correct? And the thing is, I was waiting for them to say, I'm not interested. So, you know, Tom, this is Jamie getting back to you in regards to that inquiry you sent to my office about the life insurance here in Lynn County. I'm just the medical underwriter who's been assigned to get that informational packet out there to you. I got the address 123 Main Street, not interested, click. And I'm having to try to be quick. Hey, you know, real quick, hey, I, I'm not a telemarketer, I'm not a salesperson. You know, hey, your phone's been blown up, et cetera. And trying to grab them on my back foot, I'm having to go in defense mode and try to save them. So now instead, what I've been doing is I've actually been taking that exact same concept, but I've just been calling it out right away in the first few sentences. This business is all about assumption. How can I be the most assumptive? I'm assumptive and confident. So here's the deal. For anybody on here who doesn't understand, like why is their phone blowing up? for an internet lead specifically. Well, let's talk about the behavior of an internet lead. They're the only lead that we have that goes online looking for life insurance or whatever way that they find us. They found us online and they filled out some sort of a form and now their phone's blowing up. They fill out our form, it comes to us, but they decided to get a, a comparison and now they filled out five other forms. And now their phone's blown up from every telemarketer across the country. So rather than being on my back foot and having to talk to someone who's mad, they were interested. They actually were very interested, but they're not interested in the process of dealing with telemarketers blowing up their phone. So I need to be the anti-telemarketer. I need to be the person who uh, differentiates myself from all the other salespeople calling them. And I'm the anti-salesperson. So Bob, this is Jamie calling in regards to that request you sent into my office about the life insurance here in Lynn County. You sent that in, then your phone started blowing up with telemarketers. I'm sure that was super annoying and overwhelming. I'm actually the local manager here in the county calling to apologize. My job is to get that informational packet out there to you like you originally requested before your phone started blowing up. Get those phone calls to stop. I just need to confirm a delivery address. The 123 Main Street, is that correct? And guys, I can't even begin to tell you uh, lately, how much my booking ratio has gone up and how much faster I've been able to fill my schedule. Because here's the deal. I started off with Facebook final expense leads. I moved into internet leads. I got my hand on some mortgage leads, direct mail. And then guess what? The world, you know, crazy stuff happened. Mail is slower than heck. Um, mortgage is pretty much dried up. Nobody's refinancing right now with crazy rates that are happening. So guess what? we're back to dialing internet leads and that's okay. And that's what I've primarily been working for the last four to six weeks and my production hasn't dipped at all. What happened for those first three weeks though, is that I went from booking all my appointments between 8 a.m. to noon to it was taking me from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And I wanted to get my time back and I found myself on the phone getting hung up on so many times. So I just decided to start calling out the BS right away. And it changed everything. And I also you know, started doing this with mortgage call-in leads too. If you've ever worked a call-in lead, um, they are either amazing, really easy books, or they can be pretty tough leads. They can be tougher than an internet lead even. So I started calling, you know, hey, Josh, this is Jamie getting back to you in regards to that inquiry that you sent into our office about paying off your house. If you passed away, you received about a dozen postcards. I'm sure it was super annoying. You called into a phone number probably just to get the postcards to stop. My job is to get that informational packet out there to you like you originally requested. So what I'm doing, I'm calling out the BS before they can even bring it up. And it's reducing sales pressure like crazy, and it's actually working. So guys, if you've been getting your butt kicked on internet leads, give this a try. And if it's a one or three month old lead, the exact same thing. Hey, back about a month ago, you filled out a form looking for more info on life insurance, and then your phone started blowing up. I'm sure it was super annoying. You're just like, you're getting down on their level. And now they're leveling with you. And like, you're talking to them like they're an actual human. And that's what this business is all about. How can I differentiate myself from everybody else? Well, guys, the telemarketer is not going to do that. So when I can empathize with them and sympathize with them, then they're more likely to have a conversation, book the appointment. So guys, learning how to dial internet leads and book 15 to 20 appointments on a dial day, it's actually like a superpower, okay? If you can learn how to dial internet leads, you have a superpower. If you can book these leads and you can take an interested person who's upset that their phone is blowing up and learn how to reduce the sales pressure and still help the client, it's like the greatest skill set in the world. And you'll be able to dial any leads, any leads on the planet. 
If you can dial these leads, you can dial any lead. So if you learn to cut your teeth on internet leads, some people, they want like, Hey, can I just buy more expensively to get an easier book? And I'm like, you could, or you could get more swings and get really good at this. And then it's like, people say the easy way becomes the hard way and the hard way becomes the easy way. Okay. I'll book the more expensive leads right now, but then I'll never learn how to dial the internet leads. And then when the expensive leads aren't working like they are right now, because of mail being so expensive and mortgages drying up, well, guess what? Now you're getting your butt kicked on internet leads because the easy way became the hard way. Well, the hard way becomes the easy way. Well, I do this now. I get through the hard now. Well, then later on, it's going to be easy because I have a skill set that nobody can take away from me. So guys, this is the most important message of this call. The most important thing that you can do to get your business going and to get your production moving and it's like a broken record. I talk about it on every call. That's why I didn't talk about it in the announcements. I wanted to make sure to spend some time on it. But this call is for new agents. It's not for people who've been here for a year. So I'm going to talk about it anyways. It's joining and participating in live dials. Okay. There's a couple different types of people who join live dials. And I'm going to kind of call a couple of you guys out. You know who you are. There's the person who just joins and listens. They join and listen. They join to learn. They, you know, this is great if you're just listening. Um, and honestly, if you're just listening, the only reason you should be just listening is if you're going through boot camp and you have no writing numbers and you literally cannot dial, or I live on the East coast or I live on the West coast and I want to get up early and go to the gym. So I want to just listen in, maybe coach some new agents or learn from some East coast dialers. So I've got my headphones in in the morning when I'm working out or eating breakfast, but you're listening and learning, um, you know, or you're at your job and you're listening, you know, contemplating leaving your job. That's the only reason you should be just listening. But if you have the ability to dial, you have writing numbers and you're just sitting on listening, there's no knowledge is nothing unless it's applied. So just listening does nothing. So next is the person who joins live dials, but they have their cameras off. And there's a bunch of y'all on this call right now who have your cameras off. And I understand that you might be self-conscious. When you dial with your camera off, the only person that it hurts is you. Okay. The only person that hurts is you. Um, I used to get on these calls and I used to be really self-conscious about what I looked like. And I would constantly be looking at myself wondering, is anybody else, you know, seeing what I'm seeing? Are they, are they seeing that, you know, my hair is messed up, whatever it is. And then I realized that nobody was looking at me because they were too busy looking at themselves. So I stopped caring and I started turning my camera on. So just keep that in mind, camera on. One thing it does for me is it's accountability. Okay. If I'm sitting in my PJs watching Netflix on my phone with a bowl of cereal with live dials in the background, I definitely do not want my camera on either. I don't want people to see that. So guys, camera on for me was accountability for myself because if my camera's on, it means I'm at least working. It means I'm at least focused. Next is the person who joins their cameras on. They work, but they're too afraid to unmute their line and actually dial live. And here's the worst part about this person is that they're going to struggle because even if they do 700 dials, they are afraid to receive feedback and they'll never get better. Um, then there's the type of person who joins live dials. They have their camera on. And when they get an answer, as long as no one else is dialing, they unmute. They do that as often as possible, even when no one's listening. Because here's the deal. Dialing unmuted, it does something crazy to you. It makes you fight so much harder for your appointments. Because believe it or not, guys, I was actually ter terrified of dialing live. And before I ever helped 20 families in a month, um, you know, I was terrified of it. And as soon as I started dialing live, I started consistently helping between 40 and 60 families every single month. And it was really uncomfortable at first because I knew that the only reason I had success up to that point, you know, 20 families in a month was because I was willing to dial the phone 700 times if that's what it took to get the appointments. And I just put the numbers in my favor, no matter how bad I was. But then I started dialing live and I got better and people gave me feedback and I started booking the ones that I should book. The people that I normally wouldn't book because they had objections and it changed everything for me. Um, you know, it's like when you dial on your own and somebody says, thanks, I got it taken care of. Okay, thanks, have a good day. And you just you give up, you put your tail between your legs. But when you're unmuted, whether someone's listening or not, there's something that happens that makes you want to fight for it. And you actually try to overcome the objection and sometimes you get it and then you're like, oh, wow, I just overcame that objection and booked that appointment. I can do that again. And you build confidence in yourself. You actually go for it 
rather than just giving up when no one's watching, because that's at least for me, when no one was watching, I gave up so many times and never wanted to admit it. But as soon as I started dialing live, I started going for ones and booking appointments that I should book because I was willing to fight for them. So when you're unmuted, you fight for your appointments. It's the coolest thing. So you can continue to struggle and try to figure it out by yourself but you will hold yourself back six to 12 months of the learning curve that you could have skipped just by dialing live all day for like two dial sessions. Not for like a year, for like two dial sessions, and then you'll be comfortable doing it. The uncomfortableness will go away if you're just willing to commit to that for like two full dial sessions all day. Every time you get someone on the phone, unmute, unmute, unmute. And the feedback that you can receive in just a couple of dialing sessions, it can change the way you dial. It can change your mindset behind dial day. I went from hating dial day to loving dial day because I got to dial live. I'd wake up every morning and kind of wonder what, what crazy thing is a lead going to say to me today? What name am I going to get called today? What wild situation where somebody basically tells me to F off, am I going to find a way to book that appointment anyways and reduce the sales pressure? It becomes fun. Guys, you have to learn how to fall in love with the work and you have to get committed to getting better and you have to be unemotional about it. This means that maybe you have to print out a script and read it over and over and over and over again until you don't stumble through it. Maybe as you're showering or taking your morning walk, you're reciting it over and over and over and over again. Maybe this means that you're calling your manager and asking to role play and have them overcome a couple objections with you and try to get better that way. Maybe it means recording yourself dialing live if you're too afraid to dial unmuted and sending it to your manager for feedback. Maybe it means dialing live and asking, hey, what could I have done better? when I didn't book the appointment. It just means committing to get better every single day. And that's it. That's the part that most people struggle with. They just don't want to do what's necessary to get better every day. So guys, if you just make the decision that you're going to do whatever it takes to become a beast and a savage on the phones, then a lead is a lead is a lead. And it won't matter if it's an internet lead, a 10-year-old mortgage lead, or a brand new direct mail lead. The discipline of dialing the phone and the skill set that can be developed with consistency is worth hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars per year. And if you're not willing to commit to get uncomfortable to learning this skill set now and quickly, you're going to get leapfrogged by every single person who does. And you're going to be six to 12 months behind everybody because you just wanted to figure it out on your own. And guys, I have seen people figure it out on their own. It just takes so much longer. And to be completely honest, only a small percentage of people figure it out because of the largest percentage of people who try to figure it out on their own, they quit. If you don't figure this out in 60 days, you're done. You're 60 to 90 days from being out of this business <clears throat> for good. If you don't commit to becoming the best dialer on the team, you're going to be done. You have to ask yourself the questions, how much money is being shy and comfortable costing you? You're shy and you're comfortable. How much is it costing you? Look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself that question. That's all it takes is a few days of actually being uncomfortable. Not just doing it once or twice and saying, oh, I tried that. Nobody gave me any feedback. I'm talking about unmuting 20 plus times in a day and you know, demanding that somebody gives you feedback. Like, what are you willing to do? Hey, my manager wasn't listening. Well, your manager was dialing too. They're trying to book their appointments. They're doing their best to listen to everybody give feedback. Say, hey, I'm dialing. Listen, you have to be willing to get uncomfortable. Jump in, learn this as skill set. And guys, if you learn the skill set, you wouldn't believe how much freedom it can give you. On the other side of this is freedom, the ability to make money at will. We say it all the time, but it's actually possible here. You can choose how much money you want to make for your family, but we have to make the decision. We have to commit to ourselves that we're going to do the work because nobody's going to do the work for you. And guess what? Nobody is coming to save you. Nobody. It's on you. Nobody is coming to save you. I joke around with a couple of people and like you hear, you know, hey, I had a really hard day. Oh, it's going to be all right. It's not going to be all right. This is a real business and you will hurt yourself financially if you don't take it seriously and commit to learning this skill set. The only way to commit to learning this skill set by doing it over and over and over again. So you have to save yourself. You have to save yourself in this business. We have to make the decision and commit to ourselves that we're going to do the work because nobody's going to do it for us and nobody is coming to save us. We have to develop this one skill 
and every other skill in this business will fall like dominoes. Every single other skill. If you can learn the phones, the phones is the doorway to everything, to everything. You learn confidence on the phones. I'm not even worried about you learning how to sell insurance in the home. Not at all. That is one of the easiest parts about what we do. But the phones, if you cannot get over whatever irrational fear you have about the phones or whatever weird mindset thing and discipline thing that you can't sit down and do it, or you can't get over the fact that there's a couple of people who are kind of mean to you on the phone, this is not the right business for you. But if you see all these other success stories, you see the thousands of people who are doing it, the person who has the right mindset looks and says, if they can do it, I can do it. The person with the wrong mindset looks at them and says, well, you know, Josh had, had, had a background in sales. Josh had a background calling leads. So no, that's why he's good. No, he committed and he did the dials over and over and over again. And guess what? He still gets his butt kicked on the phone too. I still get my butt kicked on the phone. Anyone who's on live dials, watch me from 8 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. this morning, get my butt kicked before I booked a single appointment. Guess what? It happens. Lou, you're absolutely right. The truth hurts. It does, but guess what? The truth will help you get better. So guys, learning this one skill will become the domino effect that will domino into every other skill in this business. This skill not only develops knowing what to say and how to say it and when to say it, but it also develops something in your mind. It gives you thick skin. It helps you going from being a blamer to somebody who learns to take 100% personal responsibility for everything. So there is just this one skill set and the discipline that's in the way of you finding all the success that you could ever imagine here at FFL. And the honest truth is that most people won't commit. They won't. 80 to 90% of y'all, unfortunately, you won't commit. And some of y'all will be here a year from now in the exact same position. And some of you won't be here at all. And some of you will have committed to this and your family's life financially will have changed more than you can possibly imagine in your wildest dreams. Um, because here's the deal. Even if one person had the light bulb go off tonight, then this call was worth it for me. If just one person had that light bulb go off and they just said, I'm going to commit to this. And they go from struggling to their family now has everything they need. Their kids can go to the school that they want to go to. Their, their wife can stay home, whatever that dream is for them. If just one person has a light bulb go off, then this call was absolutely worth it. So all the scripts, all the tools, all the podcasts, all the resources, they're available. They're actually in wild abundance. But if you don't apply the knowledge, it's absolutely wasted. I definitely believe that somebody on this call had the light bulb go off. And I cannot wait to see who it is. I appreciate you all. I hope everybody has an absolutely amazing night. I will see a bunch of y'all in Charlotte on Friday and Saturday. Looking forward to it. And the rest of y'all, see you next Monday. Have a good night, guys.